On today's show, Ford shows off a new global performance car, Nissan's Super Bowl ad revealed more than just its Le Mans car, and who is the best-selling brand in China? All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for Tuesday, February 3rd. Ford has a long history of producing high-performance versions of the Escort and Focus sold under the RS brand. Its history dates back to the 1960s. Today, the company just unveiled its latest version, the 2016 Focus RS. It'll be built at its assembly plant in Saar Louis, Germany, and exported around the world. It's powered by a 2.3-liter EcoBoost, producing over 315 horsepower. Power is fed through a six-speed manual and an all-wheel driver system that features two electric clutches and dynamic torque vectoring. Ford claims the RS will generate over 1G in cornering. The only bad news is that we won't be able to drive it until next year. And yes, Ford will continue to sell the Focus ST since the RS will be for a very discriminating buyer. You know, not only did Nissan's Super Bowl commercial reveal its new Le Mans car, but we also got a look at the fresh-faced Maxima. It's a far cry from the current model and adopts some of the styling cues from the Murano and Rogue. Personally, I really like it from the pictures. Nissan is really breaking itself away from the crowd, at least style-wise. I wonder if this could have a similar effect on Maxima sales like the previously more stylized Hyundai Sonata. He announced it will have a refreshed version of its tiny Picanto car at the Geneva Motor Show this March. The new model, which comes in both three and five door versions, features a redesigned front and rear end. Inside, it comes with new chrome accents, a reworked dash, and new color options. The Picanto is built in Korea, and the new version goes on sale this March in Europe. Still to come, a Chinese automaker hires a former GM exec, we break down China car sales by brand, and a look at the new VW Golf R. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. General Motors is making progress with its ignition switch fiasco. Bloomberg reports that the lawyer in charge of compensating victims, Kenneth Feinberg, says no one has rejected their payments yet. So far, 125 accident victims have accepted settlements, including 50 death claims. But there still is a long way to go. Feinberg is waiting on documents for nearly half of the over 1,600 unresolved claims. Chinese automaker Quoros, which is a joint venture between Cherry Auto and the Israel Corporation, just hired former GM executive Phil Murtaugh as its new CEO. Murtaugh has a lot of experience in China. He previously ran GM China, led SAIC's international operations, and was also CEO of Chrysler's Asian operations. But he's got a lot of work cut out for him to boost sales. Last year, Quoros sold fewer than 7,000 cars in China. And speaking of sales in China, which car company did the best last year? Tracking sales in China can be very confusing. That's because there are so many cross-linked relationships. For example, Shanghai Automotive makes cars with both Volkswagen and General Motors. VW has a joint venture with FAW, but so does Toyota. See what I mean? It's hard to figure out, so let's just look at sales by brand. VW is the best, with twice as much market share as second place Hyundai. And for all the problems the Japanese seem to have in China, Toyota is the third best selling brand. It's amazing to see Buick in fourth place, easily outselling Chevrolet which is in 8th place. Nissan is ahead of Ford, but those positions will likely swap places this year. Then Honda is the third Japanese brand placing in the top 10. And finally, we get two Chinese brands, Wuling and Chang'an. And now you know what were the 10 best-selling brands in China in 2014. Coming up next, a look at the most powerful golf to hit the U.S. market. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport, and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work. 
Dow. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. The performance version of the VW Golf is about to go on sale in the American market. Here's After Hours co-host Gary Vasilash checking out the new Golf R. Hi, we're here in beautiful Julian, California with Michael Klepatowski who is in charge of the Golf family uh, at Volkswagen of America. And the most important part is that we're here with the newest member of the family, the Golf R. So Michael, uh, why don't you tell us about this, this wonderful car that we just drove up here. Sure. So this is the 2015 Golf R. Um, which is the next car that we're introducing as part of the Golf family. So it's based on the Golf and the GTI that have been winning awards uh, in the last year. Um, but this is just kind of a amped up Golf uh, with all-wheel drive and almost 300 horsepower. It's one of the, it's the most powerful go Golf we're, we've brought to the U.S. on 0 to 60 under 5 seconds. So we're, we're really excited about it. So turbocharged four-cylinder engine? Yes, turbocharged four-cylinder engine. It's base, based off the EA888 in the GTI, um, and then with some additional uh, bigger turbo and, and uh, different cylinder head, uh, things like that, which get it up to the 292. So, so the horsepower difference between a GTI and the R? Uh, it's about 80 horsepower, 70 with the performance package. Uh, so. Uh, all this extra performance, 292 horsepower, 280 foot-pounds of torque, uh, but still 3 mpg improvement on a highway, so 30 mpg highway. Uh, so all that performance still with, with efficiency in mind and, and great great performance. And, and you do have some design cues, so someone who's opting for this car rather than the GTI will be able to have some uh, points of sure. difference? Yeah, I mean, there's uh, the front and rear bumpers are unique, so we've got the, the unique bumper with the air inlets. Uh, the headlights are actually also unique to the Golf R, so uh, both of these LED DRLs um, are illuminated, so somebody that knows the R really can tell far, far away even in the daytime that it's, that it's an R approaching. Um, and some of these chrome elements here, um, the silver elements that replace what on the GTI would be red. Um, and then at the rear, also a unique rear bumper. Um, and for the first time now, we'll have quad exhaust on the rear. So Golf R always had a unique type of exhaust, center exhaust, uh, dual exhaust. Uh, but for the first time now, we'll have the, the quad exhaust on, on Golf R. And then just little things like uh, black mirror caps, um, the the R, R badges on the on the low, on the fenders, and the unique wheel design, the uh, 19 inch wheels. So, so another thing that is interesting about this car is that you have a DCC system yes. that allows people to to set the car up for the conditions that they want to drive it under. Exactly. So it's it just really adds to the versatility of uh, of the of the Golf. You can set the car to a comfort mode or a, a race mode, and and take go get groceries, go shopping, or take it to the track. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for your time and uh, very nice car you guys have here. Thank Thanks. You. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to check out AutoLine After Hours this Thursday. John and Gary will be joined by Tony Roma, the chief engineer of the Cadillac CTSV. So if you've got any questions about that car, make sure you tune in at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on our website, AutoLine.tv. That wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.